My name is Jim Morton from the Seattle Aquarium. Our illustrious panel of speakers will introduce themselves during their talks, because otherwise it'll screw up their timing, and I don't want to be responsible for that. So how many people have done like a lightning talk or a Picha Kucha or Ignite? Are you either done or seen? Never. So this is what you have in store. So they are five minute talks. The slides move whether we're ready or not. Oh. It will be done in that much time. It's They're a lot of fun, it's very fast paced. The nice thing about them, we've done them at the Seattle Aquarium. It gives you just a little bit to get you interested and then it generates a lot of great conversation afterwards. And we won't have time for questions but we do have an event tonight so please seek us out if you have questions about our talks. So the thing about the lightning talks is kind of a high wire act for the speakers. Uh, so they really rely on your energy and your sort of enthusiasm. So we'll really appreciate that throughout the, the event. Are you guys ready? Wait, wait, wait. You. Are you guys ready? No! Do you hold applause to the end or yes. after you do? No. <laughs> applause whenever it's appropriate. No, you do not. All right. I'm nervous. Ready? I've never done it before. My heart rate is going up just like a robot. I know. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Nice. Sympathy side. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. I can't see my slide. On your marks. Just set. Go. What's the first rule of Fight Club? <laughs> What's the second rule of Fight Club? <laughs> Do not talk about Fight Club. So it took me almost 20 years to figure out what we were doing wrong about shark outreach. Then I finally realized we needed to take a page out of Tyler Durden's manifesto to become better advocates for sharks and their conservation. So the new first rule of shark outreach is you do not talk about shark attacks. We all know shark attacks are rare, right? It's like our favorite thing to talk about. You're more likely to be bitten by a dog or Luis Suarez. You're more likely to die by pig, by vending machine, by falling coconuts. You're more likely to be struck by lightning, more likely to be injured by a toilet than bitten by a shark. And yet, we cannot resist bringing it up. And where has all of this mathematical gymnastics gotten us? Well, if you look at the recent official responses in North Carolina and in Western Australia, you'd have to argue it's not gotten us real far. Uh, and why is that? Well, I would argue it's because we have willfully and blissfully ignored two basic factors, and that's human nature and the way the human mind works. Yeah. Evolution and common sense tells us to be wary of large toothy predators is completely rational. But the stats tell us to be worried about shark attacks is completely irrational. But is it really that surprising that our basic instincts would overwhelm our rational minds? When our fears go to the irrational, we call those phobias. And one of the ways you deal with phobias is that you learn as much as you can. And as educators, we love that. But it also exposes one of our biggest blind spots in that science deficit model. The erroneous idea that to change people's minds, all you have to do is fill the holes in their brain. What's much better to do is repeated, non-threatening exposure to the trigger. We can do that too. Touch tanks, snorkeling, it's all right up our alley. But if every time we talk about sharks, we also talk about shark attacks, are we doing more harm than good? If you're trying to help someone get out of a fear of heights by taking them to the top of a tall building, would you really whisper in their ear as they peered over the side? Hardly anybody ever falls and pumps you down. <laughs> you would not. But every time we talk about sharks, we remind people about shark attacks. And that's just not how the human mind works. Even though we have this pathological desire to force people to get over their fear of sharks and to love them like we do. If you think about your life experiences like a trickle of water, every time your life experience is reinforced, you add a new trickle. Those trickles grow into rivers, and as an adult, we have way more rivers than we do trickles, and they are much, much harder to redirect. Those rivers are our mental models of the world, and they're really important to us. It's too overwhelming to try to process every new experience fresh, so you interpret your new experiences through the lenses of your mental models. The drawback is those mental models are very resistant to change. They have built-in survival mechanisms called confirmation bias. So when you are thinking that you're afraid of sharks, the information that supports that idea is held onto, the information that doesn't support that idea is shooed away. 
And no matter how hard you try, sometimes it's difficult to push those out of the way. That those mental models become very entrenched inside your mind. So for example, if you were to tell some folks, you know, sharks kill 10,000 times fewer people than automobiles do every year. In their mind, they're processing that like, yup, I knew it, sharks kill people. Now it's possible that you could give them some of that really strange, contradictory statistical information and that would create enough cognitive dissonance that they would create a breakthrough for them. Much more likely your mental models will fight back, especially those that are tied to really powerful emotions. Now the disciples of Richard Louvre love to tell us that child abductions are no more common now than they were when we were kids. That's surprising to me, and it may very well be true, but if my daughter Hannah is abducted while she's playing in the mud, the rarity of that occurrence is not going to be much consolation for me. The rarity and that talk of how rare kidnapping is, all that does is make me think about kidnapping and how precious my daughter is to me. My mental models are overwhelming the rational argument made by the statistics. So what's the answer? We have precious little time with our audiences. So why are we using so much of it banging our heads against entrenched mental models? Most people don't have models to fall back on. So even if we were successful, where do they go? So what I suggest is that you build new models that are based on the grace, intelligence, and the wonder of sharks. If we want to change minds, we have to change the rules. And so the new first rule of shark attacks is you do not talk about shark attacks. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.